the water planet, third from the sun, and the only planet in the solar system where water exists in liquid form. In fact, three quarters of the Earth's surface is covered with it. Yet millions of people struggle to find enough water to survive. With the world's population growing by about 90 million people every year, the supply of usable water just isn't keeping up. Usable is the key. The overall amount of water on the planet never changes. It's only the distribution of it that varies, as a liquid on the surface or below it, as a vapor in clouds, or as a solid at high altitudes and in the higher latitudes. Making sure we have enough water in usable form and getting it to where it's needed is what water management is all about. Conservation is one method. Using less water whenever possible. Cleaning up polluted water. And recycling water, especially for irrigation. Desalination, or desalting, is another method of increasing the supply of usable water. To most people, desalination means desalting seawater, unlocking the ocean's vast liquid treasure. One of the reasons desalination is becoming mainstream in the United States uh, is partly the result of uh, successful efforts in other parts of the world. But it was only recently that in the United States, water supplies uh, began to diminish. Population, of course, continues to increase. And most of it to the sun belts or to either of the coasts. And we need to supply sufficient water to meet those demands. Seawater desalination is occurring now because of technology. The membrane technology for treating ocean water uh, has advanced rapidly in the last 10 years. Exactly how does desalination work? There are several methods of removing salt, minerals, and other contaminants from water. Electrodialysis. Two types of membranes are placed between pairs of electrodes. Positively charged ions, such as calcium and sodium, pass through the first membrane. Negatively charged ions, such as chloride and sulfate, pass through the second membrane, producing fresh water. Distillation. Water is heated to the evaporation point, which turns it into a vapor, leaving salts and other minerals behind. Instead of heat, reverse osmosis uses pressure to remove salt and other minerals. Water molecules are forced through a special membrane under pressure, leaving the minerals behind. This is a reverse osmosis uh, membrane uh, made on continuous uh, membrane casting machine. Uh, the white film on the surface of the membrane is the thin polymer that uh, allows water to pass and uh, rejects salt. The white film is uh, cast onto a to an unwoven uh, carrier, uh, which gives the membrane strength. This is a, a real spiral. The uh, product water then passes spirally around until it enters into the small holes that were drilled in the product water tube and is collected out the end. So it's taken the last 30 years to develop incredible breakthroughs with membranes. And these membranes now have made it economically viable to think about desalinization as part of the solution to water shortages, especially in the arid west and the southwest and, and also over in the southeast, including Florida, through Texas over here to California. Today, the cost of the salted water is as low as about $2 per thousand gallons or about $750 per acre foot which is only three times more costly in California than the water of the Colorado River. The oceans are infinite, so the, the supply of water we can achieve from the oceans are essentially infinite as well. However, 
you have to remember that they will only make up a fraction of the total water supply. It is not the entire solution to the problem of water supply shortages, but it is part of the solution. Part of the solution, too, is the term conservation, how people can better manage water. Part of the solution also is efficiencies. As we do more and more research and get higher levels of technology, the technology we have today is going to be overshadowed by the technology we have tomorrow, which will become more efficient for us. Everyone is seeking, uh, both as a technological challenge and, and as inventors in, in, the, in the art, that next breakthrough. Um, it's hard to say whether or not and when that breakthrough will come, but there are some improvements in technology that are happening constantly, every day. And majority of the companies which build regular water system, they have capability to build uh, the desalination system, either brackish or seawater, or even wastewater reclamation. So this is just a question of need. If there is need for, this, for the water and there is water shortage, technology is there and can be very easily implemented. Seawater desalination is an alternative water supply source. And in the instance of Tampa Bay water, where I work in the Tampa Bay region, it's a drought-proof supply source, that it's not relying on rainfall. And that's an important consideration. And it also is a source that can be developed in a very environmentally friendly fashion. This is the largest seawater desal uh, facility that's been permitted in the United States. And it's the largest uh, to be permitted in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, it will be uh, the largest producing uh, facility in, the, in North America at the time that it uh, goes online. And it's the first opportunity for us to introduce into the region, region-wide, the seawater desal as a source, uh, and that helps us uh, with our water quality. After years of disagreement about the environmental concerns resulting from the pumping in the northern Tampa Bay area, the Water Management District and Tampa Bay Water reached an historic agreement as to how to solve this problem. The solution is in itself to reduce the pumping in that area and to do so you would have to therefore develop new supplies which would involve seawater desalination as one of those alternative supplies. The principal benefit that we get is that we're able to baseload the seawater desal facility which means we're able to run it all the time and that allows us to reduce production from our long producing groundwater supplies and try to achieve environmental recovery. There's no question that a, a wave actually swept through the water industry based on the results of this project when it was first published. And the project's still on track to really change the water industry. Up until that time, desalination from seawater was just simply considered too expensive to be practical. With this project developed as it was, the delivered cost of water was originally projected at $1.72 a thousand gallons. And that's comparable now to many types of other sources of water being developed by water utilities all across the country. But with any project, you have to look at all the aspects of the project. In our region, for example, the projects that are easy to develop because of cost and the technical aspects have been developed. So now you begin looking at alternative supplies. We, we're developing 66 million gallons per day of surface water. We're developing a 25 million gallon per day seawater desalination facility. And we're looking at building a 5 million gallon per day brackish water desalination facility, which are all very viable water supply sources. And that's why desalinization is so important, because desalinization will help us when we do go into a drought condition or we go into a population expansion, we'll have adequate supplies for both population as well as our economy. Today we have a pilot plant uh, in El Segundo uh, inside the boundary of an existing electrical generating plant where the benefits of the, of the plant and the desal uh, can come together. And that plant has four projects going on uh, that are research projects that evaluate the environmental impacts, the water quality of the source water, the water quality of the product water, and the uh, process of actually inputting the water into a potable system. 
Uh, that is going to require do it, doing due diligence to make sure that the uh, environmental impacts are well known and predicted and are, are within a, a very a small margin, essentially a de minimis impact to the, to the environment. We like to look upon reverse osmosis as a very environmentally friendly process. But one of the large deterrents to more widespread use of desalination, particularly on the coast, is the fact that it is not a well-used process at the present time. It's not as widely used, for example, as utility plants are for generating power. As a result of that, people are unsure of the kind of waste that may emanate from a desalination plant. They're concerned about the environmental aspects of what impacts desalination plants might have. Naturally, a, a very good question to ask at this point in time. The only problem with the desalination of brackish water far from the coastal location is discharge of the concentrate, which is usually between 15 to 20 percent of the water taken from the ground. This could be expensive and sometimes does present environmental problem. And there are uh, demonstrated methods, uh, engineering methods that can be utilized to make the discharge of concentrates and brines safe to the environment. That's a category which is recycling wastewater. There is a problem of the public perception of using this water for the potable application. Historically, the public uh, fears things it doesn't understand. People in my position of water and wastewater have a challenge ahead from public relations. Uh, pure is an ambiguous term, and I'm not sure where it begins or stops. I'm not sure where wastewater becomes drinking water, except from a a technological standpoint. It's all at one time been uh, reclaimed. It's been used over and over. Uh, unlike fossil fuels, we're not running out of water. I like to encourage the exploration of very new innovative technology. Uh, those technologies where the, the casual viewer were, would say, well, that's not possible. But you know, we said that um, these thin film composites weren't possible either some 15 or 20 years ago, and now they're the state of the art. But who knows, the next process may be something totally different, non-thermal, non-membrane. Uh, who knows what it'll be? But, it's, but that's the next great challenge. In the United States, we have this propensity, unfortunately, to use water once and get rid of it. And in Southern California alone, the effluent stream that goes in the Pacific Ocean is over two billion gallons a day. The issue at hand is whether or not we abuse and misuse water because the perception of the world is that water has no value. We know what the cost is, but we don't know what the value is. You have to remember that we are living with largely subsidized water at a very low cost to us. We have to place a more realistic value on the cost of water, and that's something we haven't done to date. We've spent a lot of time now developing these treatment, new treatment systems, developing the technology. More importantly, people will have to realize that water is going to not be the cheap commodity it may have been in the past. The economy of the United States is water dependent. There is not one item that's manufactured in the United States that does not have a requirement of water in it. To produce a Ford Taurus with four tires requires 39,000 gallons of water in its process. If you take a look at the Sunday New York Times, to get that paper to the front door, it takes 150 gallons of water to produce that Sunday paper, one copy, and they produce one million of those. If you take a look at a pair of Levi's made out of cotton, it takes 1,400 gallons of water to produce that pair of Levi's to get it to the marketplace. So water is a part and a parcel and the fabric of our economy. And until the general public appreciates the value of water, we will continue to misuse and abuse it and will continue to discharge over 2 billion gallons a day in Southern California to the ocean. About 50% of the population in the United States lives within about a 50-mile radius of the coast. And because of that, 
The water resources are precious, the population's growing, and ocean desalinization is now is within 20% of the cost or price of water uh, that is served to the customers today. It is now time to start planning for and building uh, ocean desalination.